going to be making the most realistic Dementor that I've ever seen on the internet. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We have more videos every Tuesday and Saturday. Okay, I'm super excited because I have found most of these things for very cheap, like the skull, $3 at Walmart, very easy to find. Just a craft foam skull. Well, you want it to be foam and you want it to be close to the size of an actual skull. It's going to need to be light enough to be hung up high. So this is one of those projects that I'm kind of going to be figuring it out as I go. I'm very excited about it because I have some really good ideas. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is make it hangable. So I've got my foam skull here and this is 16 gauge galvanized steel wire. I'm gonna stab it with a skewer. I want it to be a straight line and I want it to come up right in the middle of the head so I have somewhere to hang it. There we go. Stabbed straight through the skull. I want it in the very middle of the skull down here. So now I've got my wire ready. I'm gonna stick it through to the top. Woohoo, that was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, I'm actually just gonna make a little loop like that to hang it with. And if you don't have 16 gauge wire, you can also use hanger wire, that will work too. Now it's put in and I'm gonna pull it through a little bit. Perfect. So I'm giving it about a foot of wire on the bottom, giving it probably more than I actually need just so that I have enough and I don't cut it too short and have to redo it. Now I'm just gonna bend it and twist the exact same way that I did before. This is gonna hold up our arms. So to keep the skull up high enough so it doesn't start sliding down and show parts that I don't want it to show, I'm actually gonna hot glue it in place just right at the top and the bottom. So the next thing I've done is I've actually twisted the little loop so it's this way instead of this way. This is going to make it so that when we can put our arms through on the wire, they'll be hanging the right way. I'm so excited about this part. I have an old junky pool noodle that we've used over the years for many things, I'm sure, many projects and fun times in the swimming pool, but its life is coming to an end. Cut a hole just big enough for this wire to fit into the middle of the pool noodle. And now that that's done, look at these cool arms! <laughs> Let's take the wire and we're actually gonna thread it through the middle of the pool noodle and then our, our arms will be adjustable. So the inside is complete with cobwebs, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> which is pretty fitting, I'd say. The cool thing about how it's shaped is the circle that's on the bottom of this is the exact same size as the circle on the pool noodle. So I just have to put it in there and the wire will fit straight through it. Ta-da! Projects like this are interesting because there's so many different ways to do it. And now look, you can tell that it's it's in there and it's not going anywhere. I think about that much. So this is where I'm gonna cut it. I just took all the fat off of the bone. Just barely. <laughs> Measure the length of exactly how long it is and bring it to the other side and cut the exact same length on the other side. Urgh! I'm so strong, look at my muscles. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do is actually take my scissors and slice on the bottom right here. I'm cutting about halfway. I'm actually folding it into itself. You can kind of see how I'm doing that. So now I'm covering the entire thing in black duct tape. I've noticed that the Dementor's shoulders are a little bit up, kind of like this, like they're coming towards you. That's kind of, you know. <laughs> so I'm actually going to shape it where I'm gonna bend the wire down. So I'm gonna put more wire in it so that when I bend the wire, it will actually keep the shape that I want it to have. I shaped it to the shape that I wanted, which is this shape. I held it in that shape while I duct taped it. So that's gonna actually hold it in that shape forever. The wire helps, but the duct tape also helps to keep the right shape. To make this wire into what looks like a bone, I'm gonna be using the rest of the pool noodle. And I think the wires are just too plain skinny to be a bone, so I'm going to cut a thin strip here, and then we're going to tape it on with some masking tape. As you can see on this bone, we've got it built up a little bit at the bottom and at the top. Took a little bit more off the pool noodle and then just working it around in the part where you want it to be more built up. That's how we're doing it. So for the next bone that goes down here, we actually need to have a wire that's bent in half like these. 
We still have a little bit of a stub of wire coming out of the bottom of the bone. We're going to attach this part to. It's always better to leave it a little bit longer than you think, just so that you'll still have something to attach it to. And you can always trim it shorter if you need to. So this is probably about a foot and a half duct tape this whole part together really tightly because I want this to stay. I might even use hot glue and then duct tape it too. So this time we've got two bones coming down this way and we're gonna build them up the exact same way that we did with the pool noodle the first time. Adding an extra bump to the top and an extra bump to the bottom. So this is going to be my very favorite part that I've been looking forward to since the beginning of making this Dementor. Up until now I've tried to make it pretty proportionate to my own arm, but if you look at any picture on the internet of a Dementor, you will find out very quickly that their hands are much bigger proportionately. They're very big, almost as big as their head. So what I've done is I've actually measured out five strands of wire and they are about four or five inches longer than my hand so that it can be long and creepy. So I have three strands of wire that are all each bent at the top and what I've done is I've hot glued it and duct taped around it. So that's gonna kind of keep it together at our base. Now what we're gonna do is fold one of them down like that and that is how we're going to attach it to the rest of our skeleton like that. The next thing that we need to do is actually trim each length of each finger. Keep in mind we want to keep as much length as possible. We want it to look like a hand and each finger is different length. So we're going to be trying to trim each finger to what would look more realistic of a length. It will take a little bit of time. Get comfortable, put on your favorite podcast. I listen to when the kids go to sleep. So I'm constantly using my hand that I've already finished and done as a reminder for where I need to make the hands match. I really want them to look exactly the same except opposite. Since we've already got each wire to the right length that the finger would be at, to make it look more like a hand, we're going to be bending it in the knuckle areas, and that will give it more of a lifelike hand look. Or a death-like hand look. <laughs> start putting the tape on to build up your whole hand. I actually put masking tape over the entire fingers before I put any pool noodle padding over the top of that. And I just use hot glue to glue that on. Build up each finger. I'm going to be taking a little bit of pool noodle, the exact same one that I've used for all of the other bones, to just give it a little bit more padding throughout each of the fingers. And then on each knuckle, I've put a little bit bigger of a piece of pool noodle to make it look more like knuckles. So this next part is attaching the hands. Now that I'm finally done, I stayed up late last night making them, and I think they turned out so cool. You can't get this in the store, it just looks too creepy. So I want this to connect with the rest of the bone as well as possible. If I had had more wire, what I would have done, which would have made this part a little bit easier, is actually made five long wires that would go from the tip of the hand all the way through the pool noodle and down to the other tip of the hand. Five, so that I could connect them as one bone, these bones here, and then have it all be just connected with the fingers. That's what I would have done had I had more wire, but I didn't have that much wire, so I had to kind of work it a little bit differently. But if you have enough wire, you should do it like that. I'm gonna actually take it and just push it through, just like that. Now I'm going to take these wires that are coming out and I'm going to fold them over the top of the hand in between the fingers. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna hold them on. Now I'm just gonna pinch it with my pliers to make sure it lays flat and cover it with masking tape. I don't play by the rules of the game. That's the song that's stuck in my head right now. <laughs> oh, oh, stop! Dirty Dementor. Dementor, my dirty Dementor. All right, time to spray paint the whole thing black. I just have matte black, it's like a dollar at Walmart, super cheap. I feel like this whole thing came together really inexpensively and I've seen a lot of things similar to Dementors at Walmart and places. They're around like 40 or 50 bucks because they're like life size and really creepy. So I think that this is a really good cheaper solution so that we can still have a really cool Dementor in our house. I wanna unglitterify this skeleton. <laughs> Dementors are not supposed to be sparkly, only van vampires, only vampires. Valentine's are. <laughs> Only vampires are. Hey, it's like automatic rotating. 
So now I gave the skeleton a little pipe to smoke. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually using a pumpkin carver. You can use any knife. It really doesn't matter, but I wanted to use this one just because I found it first. I'm going to be cutting the jaw off of this so that I can actually make its mouth open like a skull. So if you have like a skull head at your house laying around, you know, like usual, then you can totally just use that. You don't have to like make it so that its mouth is open. Ta-da! Hello! Chop off a little bit right here. And what that's gonna do is when I glue it back together, the mouth will be open. So I made sure to paint the inside of the styrofoam with acrylic paint. If you use spray paint, it will eat away at the styrofoam. This dementor is gonna be hung from three different lines of fishing string. The first one is on the head, of course, and then one on each thumb. And that's so that we can get it to look like it's coming for you. Roar! Okay, so we're doing the tape face challenge. Woo -woo! We're basically taping it together to make it look like there's some flesh on the skeleton still. And then we're gonna work it into a smaller circle right here so that we can see where it's giving the Dementor a kiss. All right, so now I'm adding a little bit more masking tape on the top just to make sure that our texture here is the same as the texture on the top. The only part of the face that's going to be showing is the front. We're not going to be showing the back, so I'm only masking taping the front. I'm getting to an exciting part. We are starting to drape it with cheesecloth. It needs to be completely black for a section where the torso is of the skeleton part of the Dementor. So I've just taken a little bit of black material, safety pinned it over the shoulders, and that also helps to kind of bulk up the shoulders and make it look like there's maybe a little bit of skeletons underneath in this area. Now we'll put the cheesecloth over the top of this. So I'm adding liquid starch, enough to be able to dump the whole amount of cheesecloth that you're dipping. In. I'm mixing it with black acrylic paint. It looks like a witch's blue. So this is gonna turn our cheesecloth black and then we're gonna drape it over the top. We let it sit outside drying for a couple of hours because especially where there's multiple layers, you definitely want to leave it drying for a while. What do you guys think? Oh my goodness. Panning shot. We need a panning shot all the way around because it looks so good. I think this is the most realistic Dementor that I have been able to find on the entire internet. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you click over here, I have made the Great Hall candles that hang from the ceiling in Harry Potter and they look amazing and they're super easy. Also, if you click over here, you can watch me every day on the beach house. We will see you guys next time. <laughs> No? <gasps>